to a new vlog. This is a week in my life in Seattle and in this vlog we are going to be mostly at my house. So my boyfriend lives in downtown Seattle and sometimes you'll see me there and sometimes you'll see me here but more likely you'll see me there. But this week is a bit different because he is out of town. So I am kicking off the vlog on a Monday night. It's seven o'clock and I just got back from my Orange Theory class, which is a group fitness class and I love it. My goal is to go three times this week. So I didn't start the vlog earlier in the day because I've just been stationary at my computer editing a lot of YouTube videos, which isn't super exciting to watch, but I am going to be doing a lot of cleaning tonight because on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a house tour. I haven't done a house tour since I moved in in 2020 and my house has changed dramatically since. And so I wanna give a tour, which means I do have to get quite a bit of cleaning done. So it's seven o'clock, I'm gonna set a timer for an hour and I don't have too many rooms to clean, but it's more like vacuuming, dusting, but it's kind of fun to vlog. It keeps me more accountable to get it done versus going and taking a shower and curling and watch and curling up and watching Netflix. So I'm not going to shower until I am finished cleaning. I'm also gonna be trying out this little Joby mic. It's a really mini mic and I'm really excited to be using it because I have been using my Rode mic in the past vlogs, but it's quite large. So it's not the most convenient for bringing my vlog camera around. Um, I'll insert a little clip comparing the Rode mic versus the Joby mic, and I'll have all of my vlogging gear also linked down below on my Amazon storefront. So let's make some dinner, put on a, probably a YouTube vlog, and get to cleaning. The kitchen is nice and clean and then I'm gonna dust and deal with the dining room tomorrow. I will vacuum up the rug tonight. Um, but yeah, all the surfaces I'll wipe down just so that it's one day less of dust close to the video. And then I'm gonna vacuum up this as well. So I'm gonna go grab the vacuum and get this done. Okay, everything is vacuumed. I'm gonna just do the glass later, but it feels so nice in here. I did wipe this off and it's eight o'clock. So there's my hour mark and I'm going to make myself some mandarin orange chicken and then fried rice. For dinner, while this cooks in the oven, I will take a shower. and I am back for my Orange Theory class. I'm feeling really good. I've spent the day at the computer working on a lot of stuff for clients for photo shoots and then also photo shoots for YouTube as well as editing a handful of videos. And so it's been a really chill day 
at the computer as is most of the week. I just placed an order for Costco for groceries and if you have a Costco membership, you can actually use an Instacart feature on the Costco website and then you bypass any of the like additional fees so you can still get the regular price like if you were to go to Costco. I am going to hop off and then we'll do a little grocery haul once my Instacart order comes in. So I'll see you then. Okay, my Costco order has arrived. In total, this was all about like $206, around $200 mark. So it's quite expensive um, for everything, but I got a lot of like bulk items as most of Costco is. So we got some eggs. These were, I think, $9, which is like, expensive but a good value for at least 24 i've seen some at qfc where you get just a dozen for like seven and then i got some vegetable spring rolls some seaweed this big 24 pack nespresso pods this is a new one that i'm going to try i usually do the peats but i saw that they had this so i thought that would be good and i believe those were on sale for like 30 something i love this Seattle sourdough bread. This is really good and lasts a really long time. It doesn't go bad. A huge thing of macaroni and cheese just because this is much cheaper than buying individual like at PCC and stuff. And then pancake mix, which is a protein pancake mix. Thing of avocados. I believe this was about $8. And then I love these yakisoba noodles. These are frozen and then you just warm them up. Good for just like a quick lunch. And then a bunch of oat milk. I don't remember how much this was, um, but it was like a good value versus buying Oatly. And then a pack of Cliff Bars and then Honeycrisp apples. And then under here is just like some really sweet sugary <laughs> granola bars that are just good for like sweet tooth kind of thing. This is what I've got for Costco, just stocking up on random bits. I'm going to now put this all away. So I am going to pack up now a box that is off to KEH. So they let me borrow some items for, um, this is actually from like a campaign about my wish list for 2023 and then like a couple other things that I've just been borrowing for like YouTube videos, um, lens comparisons, stuff like that. And it's time for it to go back to KEH. So KEH is where you can buy used camera equipment and you could also sell your gear too. You can trade it in, you can send stuff in for repairs. So let's say you have like a film camera that needs to get fixed up, but maybe there's not a repair place near you. You can send it into KEH. So yeah, we're gonna just pack this back up. Um, I'll have a coupon code for KEH down below and then all of this stuff will be linked if you're interested. So here's the Mark IV that I was uh, shooting on. So with KEH, all of their items are rated on a quality scale and it's transparently ranked. So you can see exactly what you're putting your money into. It goes from excellent plus, which is basically like new, all the way down to bargain. And then bargain might have like wear and tear on the outside of the camera or the lens, but it doesn't affect the glass at all. Here's a 18 to 15 millimeter. This is a fisheye lens. Um, this was just for my wish list video. And it's like these lenses where you're not gonna be using them all the time. It's a great place to like you might as well buy used because you can save so much on them. Um, and it's like, just because it's used doesn't mean it's in bad condition. It just means that somebody's not getting enough use out of it. Most likely, you know, it's collecting dust in their closet. So this is the fisheye lens. This one, I am like going back and forth if I want to buy this because if there's a chance that I upgrade to mirrorless camera this year, then I would probably want to buy the rf lens the mirrorless lens for the camera um but this is the 85 1.2 from canon it is my favorite lens ever at the moment and for like the past year i have done like reviews on this lens comparisons it's amazing and this is 1.2 so it's a higher price point but they also have 1.4 1.8 all on keh the awesome thing about buying used equipment is that like let's say you wanted to originally buy a 1.4 new but you were actually able to save so much that like the price point of a 1.2 
use wasn't that far out of reach because of the savings. So here's the 24 to 70 2.8 lens. Let me get like a nice close up so you guys can kind of see the glass. But yeah, this I love for filming videos with um, for YouTube tutorials. This is a great option for portraits. If you are like going on vacation and you wanna just bring one lens with you, this would definitely be it. However, the size isn't going to be the most practical. Like you can't put this in every handbag that you have versus something like a 50. So yeah, I'll have a coupon for KEH if you're interested down below. And again, like, and everything's quality inspected and ranked, like I said, so you know exactly what you're buying on like a Facebook marketplace. So everything comes with so much bubble wrap going crazy everywhere. So I'm gonna wrap these back up um, so they arrive safely back to the warehouse in Atlanta. So I am uploading a vlog right now and getting it ready to go up. It's 8.30 at night. I just took a shower and washed my hair. I'm deciding that I'm gonna film everything I need to film um, tomorrow. So the handful of reels, the ad, and then um, my what I spent in a week video. So I'm gonna wake up early and then I have my regular workload and then um, I need to like clean the house. So I'm trying to decide when I wanna to go to Orange Theory. I really don't wanna to make tomorrow like a rest day because once I can start going days in a row, I'm just able to swing into the habit so much easier. I have good news. I am gonna return the eggs and then the carton of oat milk because my mom, I guess, had already purchased eggs. I don't know why I didn't think to open up the refrigerator and look and see what we already had because we just don't really have a lot in the refrigerator because I've been gone at my boyfriend's for like the past year, essentially, um, but I can return that big thing of eggs, which is good because I don't need 24. We have just a dozen in the fridge. And then the oat milk, I have three containers, individual ones in the garage. So that will save me like $100 because of the price of eggs lately. So you probably heard about how the price of eggs has skyrocketed and like seen the memes and it's because of inflation and everybody is being affected by the rising cost of groceries, including the corporations that are ranking in billions while families are struggling to eat. So according to the Federal Reserve Bank, I actually have these numbers in front of me. Two years ago, a gallon of milk averaged 374. Today, it's 421. Two years ago, pre-pandemic, a gallon of milk averaged 374. Today, it's 421. And that's just plain milk, the regular original. That's not oat milk, anything, 421. So there's no single reason for why inflation is happening, but the main cause right now are the aftermath of the pandemic which the pandemic disrupted global supply chains and Russia's invasion of Ukraine has also caused delays in global production. But there's the other factor too, which is the corporate profits. So remember when I said that everyone's being affected by inflation and corporations are benefiting from it while American families are struggling to feed their families. Corporations have three options when it comes to rising costs. So climate change, crop and livestock, diseases, gas price and supply chain issues have contributed to the higher costs depleting available supplies. You probably also, I'm sure you remember, remember when gas was like $7 a gallon all across the United States. Most inflation is from corporate profit margins that are determined by CEOs. And the source for that is EPI and Forbes. In over 75% of United States industries, a smaller number of large companies now control more businesses than they did 20 years ago. This is true across healthcare, financial services, agriculture, and so much more. It's giant companies like American Airlines, General Mills, and Exxon that are blamed for price hikes on inflation. And here's the thing, they are being called out for deliberately raising the prices to pad their profits. Yes, it's natural for a company to raise their prices when costs go up. I mean, as photographers and creative business owners, we have to adjust to the economy in that way too. However, we're talking about the major corporations and how they are making inflation 
be a thing. But when these major companies push prices way up beyond the cost of doing business, that's profiteering, which means accelerating profit margins and enriching shareholders at the expense of consumers, at the expense of Americans and families all across the nation. <sighs> okay, so here's what we can do. So on a larger scale, the goal is to lower prices for families and increase wages. Government assistance programs like SNAP, which stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is the largest U.S. federal food assistance program that exists. And the current Biden administration recently signed a executive order which seeks to hold corporations accountable to stop profiteering because people often fall through the cracks. And then on a smaller scale, you can donate to local food banks and pantries such as the Love Fridge, or you can start one in your own neighborhood, as well as supporting programs such as Food Not Bombs and Food Rescue Hero Network, which are programs that distribute surplus food to people who are food insecure. So I know that was a lot, but I really try in as many vlogs as I can to talk about some things that has to do with the current events and how we can help on a large scale, and in this case, also a small scale. So I'll have those resources linked down below if you are interested. My video is now ready and I am going to schedule it for tomorrow, which is going to be Wednesday morning. I'm going to do like an 8 a.m. because um, though I am on the, actually, you know what? Let me do a 7 a.m. I try to think more about Eastern time, even though I am in Pacific time. Um, okay, that is all scheduled out and ready to go. Perfect timing and it's ready to go. Okay, it's done. Okay. It is all scheduled and good to go, which means that I can unplug my hard drive and close my computer for the night. So I am going to, it's 8.48, I'm gonna do like my hair, put some heat protectant in it, get into my pajamas, watch an episode of Never Have I Ever on Netflix, which is like my guilty pleasure, and then go to sleep because I have a long day tomorrow and I need to get up quite early just to get started on cleaning my house since we're filming the home tour tomorrow. So I will see you Wednesday morning. It's Thursday morning and I have been up since seven <laughs> doing computer work and I took a couple of calls and now I am just getting ready to film. Um, I was going to film yesterday and then I chose just to get as much computer stuff done for the week as I could because I think that tomorrow I'm gonna be doing photos with my friend Sophia um, in the cherry blossoms in Seattle. We might do tomorrow or Friday. We haven't like really decided yet because um, Ryan actually comes home tomorrow night. So then I could just like stay with him and it'd be like easier all around because we can like change at his apartment and stuff like that. But um, anyways, I am not sure, but Today I am going to be filming, so I did all my computer work, so that then this afternoon we can just have um, like a bit more wiggle room with filming. So I'm gonna do a ad for KEH um, for Instagram Reels, and then, and I have like a script I've written out for that. And then I have a couple of random Instagram Reels that I wanna film that sounds very like whatever, it's just Reels, but I do try to film in a batch so that like every two weeks um, I can get that like like I can disperse the content over the two week period. So then I have a manicure at noon um, and once I get back from that I'm going to be spending from 1.30 to 4 basically when Esther comes over um, cleaning my house. So I dusted my bedroom today. I cleaned that all up. But I still need to dust in the bathroom. I need to clean the bathrooms and I need to vacuum and I need to dust in the loft. Oh, and downstairs. So that's gonna take about two hours probably to do, I'm thinking. Um, so I'm gonna get all the filming done now, but that's why I needed to wake up early and get on the computer. So I don't know if I'm going to go to Orange Theory tonight. I might get dinner with some of my family, but they don't know yet if they are free. So we'll just kind of see how it all pans out. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of an update. It's 1030 on the dot and I've printed out my script for the KEH um, Instagram reel ad thing and I'm going to do that first because that's the highest priority. Yeah, I need to get, <laughs> I need to get going.
Okay, I just filmed the reel and now I have to head out because I forgot I wanna pop into Costco to make the return for the eggs and the milk to save myself $100 basically. Um, and I almost passed out because my blood sugar is super low. So I just took a little break <laughs> from filming. So we will do the sit down YouTube um, when I get back. But I wanna show you my setup for Instagram reels. It's a little bit like unnecessary, but I think it's just kind of fun to share. Um, so this is an LED light panel from Savage that I love. I'll have all of this linked down below on my Amazon storefront. You can control the temperature. So if you want it to be warmer or cooler and then the brightness. And um, then I have this little phone tripod stand, which I really, really like. I brought this with me. Um, overseas and it was wasn't too heavy in my suitcase but it's sturdy though it's not flimsy while still being quite light lightweight I didn't end up using this mic because it was getting in the way with my clothes but I do really like this lav mic um, to plug into my phone just for better sound quality I will have all of this linked down below there's my script folded up for KEH and then the camera that I was using to talk about, um, and that's that. Okay, here's what I was wearing. These pants from LA Apparel, and then this little thrifted shell belt, which is really cute, but it doesn't really fit. I didn't put it through the loop, so it's not really fitting, but it looks cute on like the camera. This little Ritzia top, and then my necklace stack, and now I'm going to change, and we're gonna head out for getting the nails done. are done like you saw they're a neon dark pink they're not really picking up on the camera at Costco it's looking treacherous but it's 133 so let's see how long it takes to make this return because sometimes the return line no matter what time of day is crazy and I think I picked like a bad time because it's like lunch hour but I'll report back and it'll be interesting to see how long it takes okay just got out of Costco and that was so fast there was only one person in front of me and they were finishing up their transactions so it was so quick I'm going to go and get a coffee am I gonna go to Chick-fil-a um I did just get groceries yesterday but I'm really shaky and I have a little bit of a drive home so I'm gonna just eat there or whatever and then have some of their cold brew I did not sleep more than four hours last night so I'm starting to feel very tired. I woke up at 6 a.m. to what felt like heart palpitations but it was just anxiety. Like my mind wasn't anxious but my body was so I could not go back to sleep. Um, so I'm definitely feeling it now and I couldn't go to sleep until midnight even with the help of melatonin. Uh, so yeah, I'm just like not feeling really great. I think I'm gonna skip Orange Theory today and do it as my rest day because I'm just not feeling it. After Chick-fil-A, I need to get home clean. We're gonna film the house tour, but I'm feeling really shaky. My blood sugar is getting really low. So I'm gonna go and grab some food. <laughs> I'm going to have something to eat and then change my clothes, fix up my makeup, and then Esther will be here in half an hour. We'll film the tour. We're gonna start up here um, just because the light is so beautiful. And I'm gonna be showing 
this room, which is the loft, my bedroom, my office, and then the like living family room, kitchen, and then bathroom downstairs, and then the bathroom up here. I'm really starting to feel the effects of not getting enough sleep. Uh, I don't think it was a good idea for me to have the coffee because now I'm back to like that heart palpitation feeling, but that's why I need to eat real quick. So that's what I'm gonna do, then I'll get dressed and then I will check in um, probably right before we film the tour. All right, it is almost eight o'clock and I'm all done with the videos for the day. Okay, I have this LED cube that I love because you can make it bright, dark, you can adjust the warmth. Um, and you can put it on top of your camera, like where your flash is, or on a tripod. So this is a little Joby tripod. And I love this thing. Oh, also what's cool is you can slide it on and off to be either horizontal or vertical. Um, it's so good, I'll link it down below. I think it's like under $20. And anyway, I just feel like it's too bright for the situation right now. It gets really intense. Um, and they just like recharge it, so it's awesome. Ideally, it would be sitting on top of the camera, but my mic is there, so it's gonna be a little bit of funky lighting right now. Um, we just wrapped up with the photo shoots, so I am, or the photo, the videos, so I am importing that footage right now. Let me actually, I haven't shared this in a while, and whenever I do share it, I feel like. Um, it's like, it has helped me so much. If you're a photographer or a content creator, if you're hosting files for video or photo, this is something that's gonna change the game for you if you haven't done this already. So here we have two different types of external drives, external hard drives. So we have a solid state drive, which is super thin, look at this, and tiny, especially when you hold it up against this external hard drive. So we have this solid state drive, also known as SSD, and then we have the external hard drive, which is a lot larger and bulkier. And chances are you probably are using one of these right now. I like this particular one by Lassie, and then I also like the ones from Western Digital. I'll have everything linked down below. But if you are using this, and you find right now that your computer, particularly your MacBook is running really slow, but you recently got it, like it's only two years old or so. And you're like, okay, do I need to update like my computer with, is it an Apple product thing? No, it's most likely you actually need a faster drive. So this is called a solid state drive. So both of these are four terabytes. But because this doesn't have as many moving parts, that's part of the reason why it makes it faster to import, to export, and then also to edit. So what I would encourage you to do is if you edit on external hard drives and you find that they are going a bit slow, try out an SSD, a solid straight a solid state drive. I'll have this link down below and you can actually use these in conjunction with each other. And there's lots of different ways you could do backup systems as well. What you could do and what I do is I will have all of my active projects that I'm editing living on the SSD. And also because there's no moving parts inside like there is with this hard drive, you don't have to worry about it being in your purse as much as you might with um, something more delicate like this. So it's really ideal for traveling. So have all your active projects on this hard drive and then once they're completed, move them over to here. You also could use this as a backup. So I have both files on both drives. This serves as a backup, almost like an archive. My active files that I'm at, my active Lightroom catalog that I'm working off of, I'm editing the photos is on here. Once I am done, I've delivered those images to my client. I can move them over here. I could also keep them, but this can act as a backup. So. Like I said, there's different systems for how you could use each, but I just wanna share, because I shared this with a friend recently in person, she's like, I've never heard of that. So if you use external hard drives like this and you find that it's slow, or maybe you're happy with it, try this out because this might be even better than what you're using currently. And it's so much more travel friendly, it's faster all around, and just look at the size difference too. Like, that's so, insane. So right now I'm going to download the files onto both drives, but then when I go to edit the YouTube video, I'm editing off of this one, and then I'm not doing any editing on this. This simply holds my projects. 
all of that to say, um, I'll have my recommendations linked down below on my Amazon storefront. And we are going to get these all imported. So good news. Um, I shared that like I was doing cherry blossom photos with my friend Sophia and we were gonna do it on Thursday. It's actually for Friday originally. I just had in my Google Calendar that it was Thursday, but in our text, we both agreed on Friday. So that's, um, that's awesome. <laughs> so that gives me all of tomorrow to get a lot of editing done for these YouTube photography tutorials. So I just brought on an editor for vlogs, Jordan, if you're watching, and if you actually need a, editor for vlogs to DM me and I can definitely refer you to her. So that is going to be amazing because I find that the vlogs become the last on my priority list for my business, but I want to become more of a regular thing on my YouTube channel, like at least for a month. But in order for me to do that, I have to think of it more from a business sense and like outsource that and get help so that then I can focus on editing the photography tutorials, which then allows me to have vlogs go up on an almost weekly basis and then also photography tutorials too. So that's what's happening um, right now. And I'm downloading the files for the house tuber. It's going to be really fun. I'm really excited to finally have this done. And then I will like build out all of the links. I might even make a blog post and just have that be like a hub for all things home. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. So it's almost eight o'clock. So I'm just going to finish up on the computer. I have some random emails to go over. I probably have like half an hour of work left. And then I, you know what? I think I might start the show Yellowstone on Netflix. I've heard really interesting things about it. And I believe it's one of those series where it's like several seasons and then each season has really long episodes to it. So I think I might start that. I don't know. Um, I am going to wrap up <laughs> for the night. So I will see you tomorrow on Thursday. It is Thursday evening. It's 4.45 and I'm about to head out to my Orange Theory class. It's been a great productive day of work <laughs> at the computer. You know, these weeks are so crucial though for me, for both my photography business and then also with content creation. And it just feels really nice to sit down and power through. Once I get home, I have still hours of work to finish up and I'm really excited because I'm actually gonna be focusing on my, oh, it's getting so bright. I'm gonna be focusing on my podcast. So I, <laughs> I'm just so excited. I love doing the Build and Bloom podcast and I am going to make the schedule for that every Friday so that then my thinking is, well, you know, let me finish my thought and then let me tell you why I think then maybe I should make it Thursday now that I think of it. So I would have the podcast go up on Friday because then it's like something that you can listen to on your way to a wedding if you're photographing it this weekend or something. But then it's like if you're shooting a wedding on a Friday, maybe I should make the upload Thursday. I don't know. Or it's like the idea is that you can listen to it when you're editing throughout the week. I guess it doesn't really matter <laughs> when the upload schedule is. Anyways, I just kind of thought that that was like a clever thing, but I guess when I really think about it, it doesn't really matter, but it is going to be a Friday upload schedule. Oh my gosh, my bangs are finally growing out. So I got really ugly straight across bangs back in December, I think it was, end of November, and they were like the worst. I've had bangs before, and I loved them, but they were cut a very specific way. I don't know how, it was by one of my friends. But this time around, it just didn't hit the same. It's not the same person who cut them previously, and it was years ago, um, and it was like such a mistake. So I'm growing them out, and they are finally long enough to kind of just have tucked into the rest of my hair. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, I'm gonna take off my makeup and head out to Orange Theory. <laughs> and I have just one more thing left to do for work, which is record an intro and outro for my 
next podcast episode. So I thought I would unbox my little Canon control ring mount adapter. This is for RF, this is for EF lenses to go on a mirrorless body for RF lenses basically, or to act, anyways, okay. <laughs> so here it is, little guy. So it just attaches to your mirrorless camera and then it mounts your non-mirrorless Canon lenses, the EF lenses. So let me show you. Okay, so I bought this Canon R from my friend Sophia. Oh, we didn't end up shooting in the cherry blossoms today because it got rained out, but we do have plans on Monday. So hopefully it won't rain. It's not supposed to on Monday. So I bought this from Sophia for about $800, which was cheaper than getting a Mark IV. Um, and I was just looking for, I was looking for another DSLR to be able to shoot the behind the scenes footage on for YouTube tutorials because I've just been borrowing a, an additional body from KEH. So let's try to put this little guy on. Okay, here's a little mount. Here's the Canon R. You can see here. And then we take this. And we find the little red dot and match it up. There we go. And then we take one of these guys. So this is a EF lens. So this is for DSLRs, basically, in summary. This is for this is a mirrorless camera. So this wouldn't just mount onto the mirrorless camera. It has to have this adapter because it's like a different kind of system. So here's what it looks like with the thing off. But the ring is that of an EF lens. So I match up the red dots. Ooh, that does add about an inch to this. Oh my goodness, okay. But let's take a look. Dee, dee, dee. Ooh, okay, cool. Awesome, okay. There we go. So that can go into my camera bag. Um, I'm gonna disassemble this. I'm really excited about using the um, using the R. I consulted <laughs> with my friend Sarah, who's a videographer, and I was like, you know, is this is this really gonna be that much different for video than the Mark IV? And like, I saw the specs and I knew it was, but I just needed that extra push. And she said this is like so much better so for video so i'm super excited okay so here is my camera trunk that i'm packing up because i have a handful of photo shoots in the upcoming week so this is from manfrotto i will link it down below i feel like i talk about it in almost every video but it's such a great hard shell heavy duty case this all can get configured you can even take this completely out you can have two cameras lens 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 you can customize all of this this is a little soft shell case from low pro which i love all these accessory pouches and then i have a memory card one in, inside of here but this has like audio stuff and then i need to organize the batteries a bit more um, but i love this so i will link this down below and then also my favorite like camera pouch accessories and then my favorite camera backpack as well then i load this up um I think my dryer is almost done and then we're going to get to recording the podcast so then I can wrap up for the night with work. And Ryan and I just went to Pike Place Market and we had an early dinner over there and it's just so sunny and nice. So we are going to drive over to 
Ballard, which is on the other side of Lake Union. And we're going to walk around, probably get some, oh, you know what? They have salt and straw, which is an amazing ice cream shop that's um, in the Northwest. So we might get that. I'm not super hungry right now, but who knows? So we are going to head out and then Oh, because I feel like so much of this week was very redundant in terms of the vlog because I was just at home working on the computer, which is what I really needed to do. Uh, so I'm gonna extend the vlog into the weekend so we have a little bit more of exciting things happening and you can see more of Seattle. So yeah, I'm now in downtown at my boyfriend's. So let's head out to Ballard. Okay, I'm with my boyfriend, Ryan. Well, I've been with him. I've been with him for 10 months now. Um, we, Ryan? Hi. <laughs> We're now in Ballard, which is a really cute little neighborhood. In a way, it reminds me, in a way, of Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Um, it's just so cute. So I'm going to take you around and we're going to start at my favorite shop, which is called Luca's Grapevines. It's the most whimsical, cozy, home decor, stationary shop, and it closes at seven. So it's six o'clock right now. So I'm really happy about that. So we're going to go in there and it's, it's just so cute. Okay. Very bad news is it's closed, but it's so cute. So this is what it's called. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, on Google, it said it was closed at 7, which sound, it's pretty late, right, for a store um, around here, but it closes at 6, but it's so freaking cute. Look at this. Like, these little bunnies. Are you serious? I don't know if I can even really get a good... Run them like... Yeah, I'm not really able to show exactly what's going on. It's so cute, though. Okay, there you go. Okay, you guys can kind of see in how whimsical it is. <laughs> Okay, it's eight o'clock and it's still kind of light outside. Yay. Yeah, it's still definitely light outside. Yes. We okay. ate dinner at Matador, which is an amazing Mexican restaurant that we love. And then we went to Salt and Straw for ice cream after. And now we are heading home. So I would love to do, I think it'd be fun to make like little videos. Maybe you had this idea, Ryan. I think you did, where it was like, a day in and then like one neighborhood like mm. Ballard like highlighting different areas because yeah. Ballard is so freaking cute I just love it so much um, but a lot was closed by the time we got here today since it was after six um, but yeah um, so super cute and we'll check in a little bit later okay so it is Sunday night and I had one of the worst allergic reactions that I've had in a really long time. It's gone down so much um, since this morning, but my eyes were almost swollen shut. All of this was super puffy, and now it's just really red, but it's gone down quite a bit. I have used, actually, Benadryl, and it didn't make it go away. I did two Benadryls last night before I went to sleep, and then I did two in the late afternoon, and it wasn't helping, but... I did get this Benadryl gel that helped within like an hour. In, it says it's for outdoor itches, but my mom said that um, 
I should use this because usually I use the hydrocortisone cream um, whenever I have allergic reaction and that soothes it but it wasn't working and I fell asleep with this on yesterday so or last night so I did this and then that helped so so much. I was supposed to do a photo shoot with my friend Sophia. We were going to take photos of each other just for like content creation at the Cherry Blossoms and I'm going to have to pass on that tomorrow and reschedule it because I don't want to put any makeup on my face tomorrow and I have another shoot the next day that I will put a little bit on because it's for a YouTube video but hopefully it will be all down by like another 24 hours and then we can shoot like Wednesday or Thursday. The allergic reaction was I used this new sunscreen and I hadn't used it in a long time. It never gave me allergic reaction before, but it could be that, or it could be that I have this gray polyester acrylic sweater. And I'm finding that when I have, the last time I wore it was the last time I had a really bad allergic reaction. Not where my eyes were swelling like this, but my skin was getting hives and bubbling up. Like literally it was so, so gross. And I was wearing that sweater and it's like a mock neck. So it's kind of brushing against, but I don't know. And then I was also using, I know for sure that I cannot use the Kosas foundation because randomly that made me start having allergic reactions too. So it makes me think that maybe the sunscreen, it was a mineral sunscreen, maybe that had an ingredient in it that is similar, something else in Kosas that I'm allergic to, or maybe it's this polyester acrylic, more so the acrylic material, I don't know. But yeah, I need to chill. So I took off the Benadryl, I did it two things of it and then I just put on some of my CeraVe um, moisturizer and then tonight I'll probably do the hydrocortisone cream um, and take two more Benadryl I guess so yeah that's about <laughs> it for Sunday not very eventful I mean dramatic but not very eventful tomorrow will be a day at the co-working space I'm really looking forward to it I haven't been there in about like uh, a week and a half or so and I love it. I'm productive at home, but there really is nothing like being able to fully zone in and focus for like hours and hours and hours at a time. So we're going to pick up a new vlog tomorrow. I'm gonna to start doing more consistent vlogs. I'm really excited about it. So be sure to hit subscribe and then I will see you in my next video. You can click right here to watch and to learn. Oh, the Build and Bloom podcast is out and you can listen to it on whatever platform you prefer, whether it's Apple or Spotify, Google Play, just search Build and Bloom and the latest episode with Marina Williams who is a photographer is out and I'm interviewing her about her styled workshop called Color Pop. Uh, it's a really cool podcast episode from a event planning perspective so I'm excited to have that finally up. So you can listen to the Build a Blue podcast, subscribe, and I will see you over in my next video. Click right here to watch and to learn and I'll see you there.